Welcome back to Andy Does Guitar. I am Andy, and this is my 3D printer, which is only half of what this video is about. Now, I've been working for on this th video. We're going to be doing something I've been working on for the past couple of <coughs> As I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted, we're going to be doing something this week that I've been working on for the past couple of months. Some of you may remember when I made this about a year ago. This is the Polycaster, which you can watch a video of me making this guitar somewhere up here. I based this design off of a Stratocaster, maybe a gem, and I actually 3D printed it with the 3D printer. Ever since I made this guitar, I wanted to do something new. I wanted to make a new one. And taking what I learned from making this, I was going to implement all of those new ideas into a new guitar that I was going to design. And then inspiration hit me in the strangest place. Earlier this year, I was playing my way through Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I was probably like 50 or 60 hours into the game where, for whatever reason, all of a sudden during the opening title scene, I was just looking at the Assassin's Creed logo, and I was just thinking to myself, that's a flying V, that's a flying V. So I thought, how cool would it be to make a 3D printed guitar based on the Assassin's Creed logo but make it a flying V. Well, I don't know about you, but I thought that'd be pretty freaking sweet. So, one of the things that I learned about making this guitar that I knew I wasn't going to make a mistake again, some of these pieces had to be printed upside down on the bed and some of them had to be printed right side up based on where the cavities were because these needed supports. Well, printing with supports is something I do not like to do on prints that, you know, take 30 something hours. If you have this centerpiece right here where the spring claw and the springs go, this is just one big overhang, which means it's going to need supports to get to that first layer right there. If you're printing it this way up, you get to that first layer without supports right there, like halfway through the print. And the supports are already so slim and flimsy and unreliable sometimes that if the supports were to fail once it got to the first layer that it had to print right there. That's a half a roll of filament just gone down the drain. Like, that's just a waste. That was the main takeaway that I got whenever I made this guitar was that if I could design something like this that doesn't need any supports, that would be ideal. And another thing that I wanted to do was this thing played amazingly when I first made it, but the action has slowly gotten a little bit higher, and that is because instead of this piece being wood, it's plastic, so the tension of the strings is constantly pulling the guitar towards itself, hence the action has raised. There are three things that I can do to alleviate this situation. I could use lighter gauge strings, which I believe I have tens on here, so they're pretty heavy for a piece of plastic. I could tune them down if I wanted to, or I could implement some carbon fiber rods in the center of this piece right here somehow. So with the carbon fiber rods, if the plastic tries to bend up on itself from the tension of the strings, hopefully the carbon fiber rods will sort of keep it in place. I don't know if I'm going to be able to implement the carbon fiber rods in there. That's sort of a secondary concern for me because I'm pretty sure if I put like nines or even sevens on something like this, the bowing won't be that big of a deal. I'm gonna go ahead and implement into the design of the guitar that there is going to be a slot for a or several carbon fiber rods, but whether or not I'm gonna put them in there yet or be able to put them in there is yet to be seen. So let's see if we can put this thing together. I'll have to apologize if you can hear the 3D printer going in the background. I'm not sure if you can, because it's all the way over there, but it is currently on hour six of a 36 hour print. So I really don't want to stop it. So you'll just have to deal with it. So this is how I made the guitar. I like to use Blender if you've seen my video on making the Polycaster back there, because for me, Blender is just easier to work with. And honestly, I don't really know how to use CAD, Autodesk or anything like that. Even though technically that's really what you should do but I digress. I unfortunately can't show you how I modeled this because I didn't record me actually modeling this because it was very much trial and error and how I model things in Blender, I'm pretty sure is also something that you're not supposed to do. So it'd be pretty embarrassing. 
I rely a little too much on the Boolean modifier. But anyway, the initial idea is that I just took a PNG of the Assassin's Creed logo and scaled it up to the dimensions that I wanted. Using some calipers that I had on an existing guitar, I got a pretty rough idea of where everything needed to be. And this design was significantly different from the Polycaster, because with the Polycaster, I was able to take the model of a Stratocaster and basically base the design around this. From this, I pretty much had to start from square one. This is the rough idea of what I came out with. Because of the limitations of the Prusa, I had to break this up into several pieces in order to fit it all onto the bed. But what is completely theoretical right now was with the Polycaster, I was able to print the entire piece where the neck and the bridge connect as one solid piece. It was barely able to just sit there on the bed. But with this design, it unfortunately doesn't fit. So I'm hoping that the tension between the strings won't basically just rip these two pieces apart once they're epoxied together. As a save card, what I did implement is a channel that runs through the center of both of these pieces to where I can put a carbon fiber rod in there and hopefully that will break up the tension. I haven't decided if I'm going to be able to actually get a carbon fiber rod in there. It's gonna have to fit flush in there so that the rod doesn't rattle around in there which means that the tolerance on the print is gonna have to be pretty precise. So I might put a carbon fiber rod in there, I might not, that's something that is yet to be seen. Because I wanted to keep as close to the Assassin's Creed shape as I possibly could, there wasn't really room to do a traditional bridge with a tailpiece, so I have opted to use a wraparound bridge. So it's only the one piece right here and that'll keep me from having to print a whole other extra piece down here for the tail piece. I really think that if the guitar is printed in white and the pick guards are printing in black, pickup covers and knobs are red, I think it'll have a really cool contrast, especially once the silver screws are in there. Because once it's all put together, it should look a little bit like this. So let's get started. And now that it is all printed, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, twenty-four pieces. And this is how long it took to print. Because nothing says professional like a fold-out table and a beach towel, right? I work with what I have. So we have all of these pieces that now have to be glued together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the edges a little bit where they're going to make contact with another piece, just so the epoxy that I use will have a little something to grip onto. And hopefully that'll make sure everything stays together. Really the only two pieces that really have to make a good contact together are these two pieces because these are the center where the bridge and the neck will join. So they join together like this. And so that has to be as flush as I can possibly make it. Get a rough idea. If we start putting all of this together, we should have something that kind of resembles the Assassin's Creed logo. So, start putting this thing together. And it's a little sloppy, but it gets the job done. So let's start putting the hardware together. Three hours later. Guys, I have some really bad news. I was putting the guitar together and I ruined it. I ruined all of it. Weeks of work, dollars spent, all for nothing. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm just kidding, it's right here.
man, the Assassin's Creed Flying V. I don't know about you, but I think it turned out pretty cool. Now, a few caveats. Like I said earlier about the Polycaster, I learned a lot from designing, building, printing that guitar. And same goes for this guitar. Um, I learned a lot, it's not perfect, but it actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting it to. There were a few design choices that I should have considered. Like for one, I probably should have ordered the parts for it before I actually started designing it because I based the dimensions off of this with the dimensions that I already got off of the Polycaster, assuming that the neck would be the same size because it's a third party cheap neck. I think I got for like 40 or $50. I bought it from the same place on eBay. So I assumed the dimensions on it would be the same. No. With the Polycaster, I made the neck pocket too shallow. So I had to shave off some of the bottom of the neck. With this guitar, I made it too deep, which actually meant that the action on this guitar originally was like this high. So I had to 3D print a little shim to put in between the neck and the body to tilt the neck back a few degrees just so you could get playable action. I haven't adjusted it yet. It might end up being a little better, but overall I'm pretty happy with it, especially considering how it first turned out. The dimensions on the wraparound bridge that I ordered were actually displayed wrong on the webpage when I ordered them. So the holes that I had designed on the body were way too small for the little pegs that are supposed to go in there. So what I actually did is I heated up the pegs with a blowtorch and then just pushed them in. Another thing, the only pots that I had lying around were actually the long ones, so the volume and tone knobs <laughs> sit way too high above the pit guard for that. So that could easily, I could easily just get a washer underneath it to make them shorter or I could get different pots. That's an easy fix, I'm not worried about that. But the one thing that I didn't do, I was going to do, but I decided not to. And now that I've glued it all together, it's kind of too late for me to change my mind but I foregoed putting a carbon fiber rod inside this guitar for one very, very specific reason. I could have fit it in there, but I have seven gauge strings on this guitar. So on the Polycaster, I have consistently had 10 gauge strings on this guitar and the action has, I've been able to manage the action, but the guitar is just ever so slightly bending over the tension of the strings with 10 gauge strings on it. I wanted to test to see how well seven gauge strings would fare without a carbon fiber rod, because if these don't warp without the carbon fiber rod, then it really might not be worth it for me to design my next guitar with carbon fiber rods in mind. If I know that I can just put seven gauge strings on it and it would be fine because the seven gauge strings have significantly less tension than 10 gauge strings. But if it still does warp a little bit, then I know that I'm gonna have to implement some carbon fiber rods into my next design, but I just wanted to do an A-B test. So even though I designed this to have a carbon fiber rod inside of it, I decided not to put one in there just so I can see what happens. And so there you go, that is that, the Assassin's Creed Flying V 3D printed guitar. Like with the Polycaster, I'm gonna go ahead and put the files up on Thingiverse, and if you wanna print it yourself, Go ahead and have that if you want to make modifications to it. Let me know if you end up printing it out. I'd really like seeing if anybody else decides to print these. I have a couple other designs in mind that I'm going to start working on and I hope to be making those pretty soon. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know, do that whole thing because I really like how this guitar turned out and I am looking forward to making new ones. So that is that. Assassin's Creed guitar. 